Leading SDG4 Conversations is a series of podcasts produced by the SDG4 High Level Steering Committee's Interagency Secretariat, housed at UNESCO. The discussions feature a panel of experts on the transforming education movement and aim to share knowledge and good practices on how we can reach the education goal by 2030. In this second installment of the Leading SDG4 Conversations podcast series, we will engage with education decision makers and experts who are at the forefront of the transforming education movement in Africa. This conversation will unravel the continent's successes and strategies in placing the teaching profession at the heart of its efforts to build resilient education systems and in ensuring that every African learner is equipped for the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century. Africa wakes heavier than other continents in the gaps towards achievement of Sustainable Development Goal 4 objective and therefore warrants a bolder approach in the continent's transforming education efforts. However, three main indicators ring a warning bell. First, as to the out-of-school rate keeps steadily decreasing, especially for the primary level. The absolute number has reached the alarming global estimate of 98 million out-of-school children in Africa. Second, the learning poverty rate was the highest in sub-Saharan Africa before the COVID-19 pandemic, at 86%. After the pandemic, it is estimated to have risen to 90%. This means that 9 out of 10 children cannot read a simple text with comprehension by age 10. Third, 17 million additional teachers are needed in order for Africa to achieve universal primary and secondary education by 2030. It is timely that, for the first time, the African Union decide to adopt education as the African Union team for the year 2024. I am Diana Cristancho, SDG4 Youth and Student Network member and also member of the Delegation of Colombia to UNESCO. I am your moderator for this podcast episode. Joined by a panel of expert and education decision makers, we will embark on a discussion about how Africa's education landscape is being shaped by the transforming education movement. Let me introduce our panel members. We have His Excellency Professor Mohamed Belosin. He is the Commissioner for Education, Science, Technology and Innovation of the African Union, also a member of the SDG4 High Level Steering Committee, the Global Apex Body for Education Cooperation. We also have Mr. Burhan Shakrun, UNESCO Director of Policies and Lifelong Learning System Division. Welcome, dear panel. Let's start the conversation. Commissioner Valosin, my first question is for you. This year, team is Educate an African Fit for the 21st Century, building a resilient education system for increased access to inclusive, lifelong, quality and relevant learning in Africa. From the early introduction, we learned about the three remaining indicators or challenges that concern education policymakers across the continent. Commissioner. What do you believe are the critical actions taken by the African Union and its member states to transform education systems and address the remaining challenge in education systems, making all Africans fit for the 21st century? Thank you very much for having you, having us with you today. And uh, uh, it is uh, for me a privilege and an honor to speak uh, at the UNESCO uh, studio about uh, issues related to education. <clears throat> I want, before I start, to, to mention how much we value our co collaboration and cooperation with uh, the UN agency in charge of education, science, and culture in the world. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, education is, is fundamental, and it's important to remember that education is a fundamental human right. This means that the state and the society at large must provide the conditions for free schooling for all children without exception. 
we must remember this principle and this year is a precious year and opportunity for us to do so. That said, education has a cost and it is therefore the primary responsibility of the state in collaboration with families, different stakeholders in the society to meet this cost. In your introduction, you described the worrying state of education, uh, of our education systems in uh, Africa. And the shortcomings are in fact systemic. Uh, they affect every component of the, the system from infrastructure, equipment, to the quantity, qualification and retention of teaching staff, to teaching methods and materials. Not to mention the students' social, economic, and family environments, which varies enormously from one situation to the other and impacts the final outcome of education efforts. This is why the, the very choice of education as the AU's theme for 2024 is in itself a crucial action, as it reminds everyone that education is a pillar for sustainable development, as stipulated in the AU Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, and also the, uh, the um, uh, sustainable development uh, goals, uh, and especially the SDG number four, which is related to education. To respond to, to your question in terms of action, we want to strengthen advocacy at all levels to put education back at the center of concerns. We, you know, with competing priorities, uh, governments sometimes tend to forget about the education sector and it becomes like, like the neglected uh, sector. Uh, we have also developed a roadmap with a sort of 10 choice menu covering all the aspects that I have already mentioned so that each country, depending on, on, on their own challenges, can choose two or three entry points to focus on to improve its education system. We are also taking deliberate steps to address the challenges facing our education systems. I want to mention uh, the, the, the most important, in my view, challenge, which is uh, the need to increase sustainable financing and systematic investment in education in line with international and regional benchmarks. And in this regard, uh, to mention you asked me what action we are, we are taking, in this regard, we are establishing an African Education Science Technology Fund and Innovation Fund, which we call ASTIF, which will be fed by member states, the African Development Bank, and all volunteer partners who want to, to contribute. This fund will be managed by the, the African Development Bank itself, and it will be available to countries to invest in education uh, from primary to high, high education, research, innovation, and the development. The ASTIF aims to fill the funding gaps in priority areas to achieve sustainable development goals related to education, to science, technology, and innovation, as I mentioned as well as the African Union uh, Agenda 2063. The goal is really to promote long-term investments in, in education, science, technology, and innovation, to enable African countries to reduce poverty and uh, achieve economic growth, among other things. It will inspire African governments to increase investments in education, science, technology, and innovation, and create conditions for building innovation-led knowledge-based economies. Because uh, as I'm speaking now, very few countries have reached the benchmark of investing 15% uh, of their national budget in education, for instance, and let alone the, uh, the recommendation of having 1% to 2% GDP investment in research and development. We, we are very far from that. So we, we hope this fund will help countries increase their, their investment and therefore being able to uh, uh, improve quality and uh, quantity of, uh, 
quality of, of teachings and quantity of, of uh, young people benefiting from different uh, uh, compartments of the education system. And establishing the, the fund will offer a unique environment for facilitating and consolidating investment also in skills development, because we are also in charge of uh, uh, skills development of TVET. So we, we, we consider that TVET is a very important second chance given to children who have dropped out from, from the, the normal curricula. And uh, this is also one effort that we are pushing uh, towards uh, in, in the, the countries because it's uh, somehow another neglected area of, uh, of focus and of uh, investment in our member states. Likewise, uh, I'm a member, as you said, of, of the high-level steering committee, and we, we, I'm very, very happy, and we welcome as the African Union Commission, and we are very supportive of the, of the current idea, which is now being taken, taken up by the, uh, the high-level steering committee, of reinforcing the coordination of multilateral funding and also exploring innovative ways of funding uh, to, to uh, uh, increase the funding of education because in Africa we have a huge gap. Uh, we did a, a study with, the, with the UNICEF and uh, the, 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 the estimated gap to reach the SDG 4 by 2030 uh, is estimated at, at 118 billion US dollars. So this discussion around some kind of global fund or global financial support to education, which is taken up by the, by the high level steering committee, uh, is, is, uh, is very important to us because uh, the, the gap is a structural gap. It's not, just a, it's not just a conjunctural gap. So we need a support from outside. I cannot go in depth in development here, but just in, in a few words, we have the, the, most, uh, the most important demographic burden on the school systems, I think, in the world. Maybe, uh, I don't know, with India and China, but, uh, but if you compare with Latin America, Europe, and Africa, we are the, the heaviest in terms of numbers of, uh, of children who, we, who will need to, to go to school every year. And even the most committed government with the, even the, the government of upper middle income uh, uh, revenue uh, may not be able to satisfy all the demands if you, if you cost, you, you take the unit cost of one child at school and you multiply by the number, the millions of children that you have to, to, to school, it will be not enough. That's why we, we welcome really this uh, initiative and we will be supporting it at all levels. At the same time, we are pushing for strengthening mechanisms of transparency, efficiency, and accountability of education uh, budgets. Indeed, again, uh, through the study that we did with, uh, with UNICEF, uh, it shows that there are gaps in this regard. Sometimes there are countries where you, know, uh, you, have, uh, you have a certain amount of money as a national budget, but you don't know at all how it is used, who is benefiting from and who is not and why. So uh, we, we encourage this, uh, this kind of uh, transparency. And at the same time, I come from the health, the health uh, uh, system. I'm, I'm a health expert. And I can tell you that when, when, uh, when uh, uh, the international community set up the Global Fund for AIDS, tubercul Tuberculosis, and Malaria, of course, countries are interested to get the money, but for them to get the money, they have to show more transparency, more efficiency, and uh, more uh, uh, um, uh, accountability. So it means that the, these elements of, of the Global Fund for Education that I was mentioning will support and boost countries to be, to be more efficient and more accountable as to the use, to the use of, of the funds. So we encourage also governments to allocate more funds from their own uh, budget to neglected but essential subsectors. Nowadays, everybody agrees. I was just, uh, we had a professor yesterday who uh, was giving us a lecture on, uh, on issues of uh, early, early education and its impact on the outcome of the life of, of somebody. And it shows very clearly that the earlier you start educating 
the better, the best, uh, or the better would be the, the outcome in your life. So this area is also neglected in Africa. And where we want to push for early childhood education, some countries are already making efforts, but it's not enough. Let me just go quickly through some uh, elements of the roadmap that I mentioned before. There are some topics that you would find in, in our roadmap. It, it includes reforming the teaching profession. There is no education without teachers. No matter what, uh, what you do, teachers are important. Even if you go through a completely digitalized um, mechanism of teaching, you have mentors. When you want to, to, to go for a graduation through, through internet, you have to have mentors. So teach, the teaching profession is very important, including I mean, the use of new, new technologies in teaching and development programs at all levels. Second, we want to upscale the implementation of evidence-based, innovative, feasible, and sustainable solutions that address the evolving context of education and training, especially those who bridge the learning access and equity and gender gaps in digital and diverse learning pathways. We have also, uh, an, uh, we insist also on foundational learning from an early stage to raise learning levels, just as I said before. And this is particularly true when it comes to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, where we, have, we are lagging behind more than other countries. And also, uh, the, 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 the gender gap in this area is very important. So we want to bridge those two gaps, STEM education for everybody, and STEM education with more efforts on girls, because they are not uh, uh, well taken into consideration in this aspect. And also, we want to establish and strengthen multi-partnership, multi-stakeholder, multi-sectoral partnerships for education at country, regional, and continental levels. And that's why I said from the beginning that we cherish our collaboration and partnership with, uh, with UNESCO, because uh, nobody can do it alone. The, the challenges are so huge. And finally, we, I mentioned already TVET, and we want really to match skills uh, with the job opportunities to equip our young people with the, 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 the set of skills that will guarantee them uh, a, a, a soft and smooth and, uh, and uh, certain uh, integration in the job market. Because... Uh, for the time being, it's not the case. In some countries, you are training people, they go with a, with a certificate or a, a qualification, and then when they go to the job market, there is no, no job for them. In summary, by making education the AU's year of education theme, I mean, the year uh, of... Uh, the theme of the year, sorry, the African Union is catalyzing collaboration between its member states to create a continental movement for the transformation of education in, uh, in Africa. This process, we want it to be led by member states because don't forget we are just the secretariat of member states. So we want it to be led by member states. They have to choose and pick three, four of the elements that I mentioned and to work on that, of course, with the support of partners, including ourselves and also UNESCO. Uh, and we, we want to involve evidence-based policy and public advocacy. We want to complete our partnerships with all those who have interest in, in education. We want to engage with the youth, uh, like uh, you are now um, taking this interview. You are a young lady and we, we, uh, we are... Uh, really very uh, supportive of that. We want to scale innovations. We want to monitor progress towards SDG 4 uh, and Agenda 2063, which is the, the Africa we want. Of course, this year is not an end in itself. It will, we want really to refocus on education and push countries to do more. But the, the, it doesn't mean that on 31st of December 2024, we will have finished with this. We, we want it to be like a year of refocus and redynamization of the education for really transforming it and for, if not reaching the, 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 the targets of SDG 4, which we know are, are far from, from being reached at the, at the time, but at least bridging the gap between the situation we are in and the targets of SDG 4. 
I just have a follow-up question. Could you please let us know what major outcome you are expecting from the upcoming African Union Summit taking place on 17 and 18 February in Addis Abeba, especially when it comes to transforming education on the African continent? Well, what we expect from the uh, the African the upcoming African Union Summit is first that they they endorse all what I said here, but. Uh, We have worked uh, enough with uh, with the ministers of education before. All the ministers of education of the continent, uh, the heads of states are uh, are aware of it because they are the ones who asked us to prepare this last year. So we 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 hope, but I think I'm 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 very very uh, uh, certain that uh, they will endorse uh, our roadmap. One, two, they will recommit. To, to give more attention to education and to invest more in, in education. And uh, three, our hope, it, it, is, it is our hope that uh, each country will select uh, three or four of the topics that are in the roadmap and to try to focus on uh, for, for the year 2024 and to report to give us like a baseline situation and report on progress made by the end of the year. And as I said, we will, we will have to report by the end of 2024 to the to the, uh, uh, the 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 summit the next summit in february 2024 but we hope by then we will have already made a difference but uh, in beyond the difference that we can make in one year is the 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 fact that people recommit themselves to invest more and to be more efficient more transparent and more accountable as far as their education systems are concerned Now, my next question is for Burhan Shakurun. Burhan, from 26 to 29 February, the 14 Policy Dialogue Forum will be taking place in South Africa. Through the forum, the Teacher Task Force will offer a platform for education actors and teacher stakeholders, including policymakers, teachers, representatives from teacher organizations, civil society, researchers, and other key partners. To, develop, to delve into what it takes to teach and educate children, youth and adults, and reaffirm the relevance of education as an equalizing factor in society. In light of the Year of Education for Africa in 2024 and key findings from the Global Report on Teachers launched 8 November last year, Could you elaborate on the specific challenge African countries are facing when it comes to the teaching professions and how UNESCO is helping the continent to address teacher shortage? Well, thank you very much. And I would like first to congratulate uh, Commissioner Belhassin for the selection of the uh, Africa Union of uh, for the Education Year. I think uh, this is uh, very good news for all of us and also to confirm Uh, the strong partnership that uh, UNESCO has with the Africa Union and uh, uh, that we are looking forward for major achievement in this year um, of uh, education. But uh, to come back to your question, I think uh, Professor mentioned already a very important factor. Teachers are the main factor for quality in schools and for quality education. So investment in teacher is uh, with the uh, promise for return for better learning outcomes, for better uh, quality of education, inclusion and, and equity. So these are very important aspects. That's why the international community set up uh, a teacher task force, which uh, is a platform that uh, works to advance the collaboration among member states, international organization, uh, foundation and, uh, and the NGOs around how to valorize, how to promote teacher policies, Uh, share knowledge and, and experiences and build, uh, I would say, collaborative frameworks to advance the teaching profession and valorization of the teaching profession uh, globally. We have by now 160 members uh, that uh, constitute uh, uh, the platform and the teacher task force. And uh, this is uh, a platform that uh, continue uh, growing with the new members and new member states that are uh, joining us in uh, this platform. To come back to your question about the challenges, let me mention that there are three challenges that uh, uh, African, uh, African uh, countries and education systems are facing when it comes to the teaching profession. One is a, an issue of quantity, the second an issue of quality, and the third is an issue of valorization. 
Regarding quantity, uh, we launched uh, the highlight of uh, the global report that will be uh, presenting in Johannesburg end of February, as you, you kindly mentioned. And uh, we see that uh, to advance and to achieve SDG 4, we are missing around 44 million teachers. 17 millions are in Africa, and that's a, a major uh, issue. Most of them are uh, in primary uh, education, but also uh, many are on, on secondary education. So the, the challenge is uh, first of quantity and of uh, recruiting, preparing teachers to uh, take and to be deployed in schools in Africa in uh, say alignment with the demographic matter that uh, Professor Abel Hussein mentioned earlier. The second is a, a question of, of quality. And uh, according to our data again and the analysis we have been doing, today we have around 35% of teachers in African primary education who do not meet the minimum qualifications requirement. And that means that they are not ready to teach, to teach to the level of uh, quality that we, we are expecting. When you take it to um, uh, the, the challenge on secondary, then it reaches 50%. So 50% of the secondary teachers in Africa do not meet the minimum requirement to teach. And that means that there is a major uh, investment to be done in upgrading, in qualifying those teachers and taking them to the minimum qualification. But the investment cannot stop in getting them to the minimum qualification. It's about offering them professional development, career development, and investing in their uh, uh, capacities to uh, accommodate new developments. We spoke earlier, for example, about technology, how to uh, give them digital skills and digital pedagogies, how to teach them how to teach uh, with the new pedagogies like project-based pedagogy. So the question is also about how we qualify, how we have, uh, we feel uh, their capacities, but also how we offer them a continuing training. And the last issue is about valorization. And that means how societies, how uh, communities valorize teachers and recognize teachers as a profession that is critical to achieve uh, the education goals, but also to achieve all the goals of sustainable development in the country or in the continent as a whole. So these are the challenges that we are facing. Then the question, of course, is these are um, a challenge that have to be addressed by member states. But then uh, Africa Union, UNESCO uh, are actively also engaging into uh, supporting member states in addressing this challenge. Let me mention three uh, initiatives that we, we are um, having and that are important in addressing those challenges. First of all, uh, together with the uh, European Union, we launched um, a new initiative uh, called a Regional Teachers Initiative in Africa and for Africa. This is a flagship initiative that aims to accelerate the training of teachers for Sub-Saharan Africa in particular, responding to this needs of uh, 17 million teachers that are um, uh, needed in uh, the coming years and to uh, achieve the SDG 4. It's about... Uh, knowledge sharing, it's about capacity building, it's about working to develop capacities of member states to have a appropriate teacher policies that can cater for the needs of uh, filling the teacher uh, gaps, but also capacity building and, and dialogue with teachers to advance the quality of education. So this one is initiative that uh, uh, we are uh, implementing together with the Africa Union and uh, with, the, with the funding from European Union. The second initiative, uh, we have a center for capacity building of teachers based in Addis Ababa called ICBA. This is an institute uh, uh, of UNESCO, and this is an institute that uh, is uh, deploying all the activities to support capacity building of teacher training institutions to be able to train teachers both in service and pre-service and, and ca capacitate them. And this last initiative, we have a, a program called Capacity Building for Education 2030, CAPED in, in our uh, jargon. And we, ha we are supporting uh, five countries in Africa in developing new policies and new institution for teachers to, the, to ensure that uh, the teachers are meeting those minimum um, requirements that I mentioned earlier. Thank you, Borhan. This brings us to the end of our discussion. What we gather from today's exchange are crucial in helping us understand the current landscape of education in the African continent. More importantly, from the stories today, we learned the good example set by the African continent of a collaborative and regional approach in tackling the education crisis by building the teacher workforce of tomorrow 
and ensuring learners are equipped with the skills required to tackle the challenge and opportunities of 21st century. Something that can be scaled to other regions that face the same challenge in education systems. By working closely together, the African Union and the African countries have to start to seek ways in building resilient education systems, where each African learner will have access to inclusive, lifelong, quality and relevant education, where no African learner is left behind. Thank you for your time once again, Commissioner Belosin and Borhan. We learned a lot from you today. To our listeners, thank you for listening and we hope you find our exchange insightful. Thank you for joining Leading SDG4 Conversations on Climate Education at COP28. Stay tuned for our next episode.